It is Friday. Thank God it is Friday. He has allowed us to see the end of the week. This is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to the family devotion where the scriptures come alive as we discuss matters from the Bible and discover why the Bible matters. Now, the country, especially after the events that happened last night, is in some sort of uh, an interesting situation. Difficult even. And I know what happened yesterday has varied views and opinions from different quarters of this country. But all of us would agree that it puts our country in an interesting position, a tension of some sort even. And so what then should we do as we reflect and think about matters like this? What should we, especially that are believers, think and even pray perhaps? What should we be, what should be our attitude in a time like this? And I think the psalm for today, even as we get to prayer and then to the conversation of today, is a helpful psalm for us to be reminded that whatever situation happens, whatever circumstances we find ourselves in, God is still seated on his throne. And so this is Psalm chapter 11. Psalm chapter 11. In the Lord I take refuge. How can you say to my soul, flee like a bird to your mountain? For behold, the wicked bend the bow. They have fitted their arrow to the string to shoot in the dark at the upright in heart. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes see. His eyelids test the children of man. The Lord tests the righteous, but his soul hates the wicked and the one who loves violence. Let him rain coals on the wicked, fire and sulfur, and a scorching wind shall be the portion of their cup. For the Lord is righteous. He loves righteous deeds. The upright shall behold his face. Yes, my brother, my sister, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven and he will work out righteousness and justice. And this is the hope that we can have even in periods like this. And so I don't know what side of this conversation you find yourself in. I know there are those, um, you know, that are sort of um, disappointed, uh, sort of in pain um, as they imagine what happened uh, yesterday night. Some perhaps are thinking maybe that was the right direction to go. And we may not always agree as believers on matters, but we must always be reminded that God is still seated on his throne and his throne is in heaven. And this God, because he is righteous, he will work out righteousness. Even when here in the earth, righteousness may not be a thing, that we might see constantly. And so shall we pray before we get into our conversation for the day. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you with thanksgiving because your word tells us to give thanks always. We thank you because you are good and you do good. We thank you even as we have been reminded this morning that you, O oh Lord, are still seated on your throne. We bless your name because we have a God that reigns forever, that the foundation of your throne is sure, and it is justice and righteousness, O God. And so this morning, gracious Redeemer, we humble ourselves before you, submitting ourselves before you. We submit our country, Kenya, before you, O God. The events of the last couple of weeks, King Jesus, have brought much stress to the citizens of this country. We hear stories upon stories, oh God, scandals uh, and rumors of scandals, uh, projects and things that we do not even know and we do not have the full details of. Oh God, we ask and pray that you will come and be with us as a nation, oh God. Even with the impeachment, oh God, of the deputy president last night, Jehovah God, we do not know what to make of that and our opinions might, might, might be varied but we look to you who knows all things, you who truly sees the hearts of men. And we ask, O oh God, you who is just and righteous, would you work out your justice and your righteousness, O oh God, over this nation and land, O oh God. 
We ask that we who are believers will not be shaken, will not walk in fear, we will not forget, O oh God, that we have a home in heaven, that our kingdom, O oh God, is coming, that indeed we are looking forward to a city whose builder is God, where righteousness reigns, O oh God. And therefore, in view of that, to live in this world in a manner that you desire for us, to as salt and as light, as ambassadors of that coming kingdom, O oh God. We pray and ask, O oh God, that as we again listen to your word today, as we wrap up the conversation we've been having this entire week, would you instruct us, would you speak to us, would you give us understanding and insight, O oh God, for the entrance of your word brings forth light and understanding to the simple. We pray and ask, King Jesus, that you will be with every listener and every viewer, that you will remember them, gracious Redeemer, and minister to them at the very point of their needs, O oh God. As you remember us here at Family Media and continue to grant us grace and favor to keep and continue keeping Jesus on the airwaves, O oh God, alongside our partners who've been very gracious in coming alongside us to fulfill that which you've called us to do. And so we thank you and ask, would you now come and have your way? For this is our humble plea in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. amen. Well, this week we've been talking about understanding the times, understanding the times. And today we bring this conversation to a close. Well, today we are talking about an interesting subject. We are talking about the teachings of demons. Is it possible? that we can find ourselves in spaces where we are actually consuming and following the teachings of demons. That is what we will be talking about today as we look at 1 Timothy chapter 4. And so again, joining us for this conversation and with us today to wrap this up is Pastor Peter Opolo, who has been with us throughout this entire week. And so we'd love to hear from you and so kindly. Do send us an SMS, 20316 is our SMS line, 0786-316-316 is our WhatsApp line. We would love to engage with you. What have been some of the insights that you have received throughout this week? And today as we talk about the teachings of demons especially, what are you hearing? What is your assessment of these matters? Kindly do engage with us. But for now, let's get to this conversation. Welcome, Pastor Peter. Thank you so much, Pastor. I'm glad to be here again. Yeah. Yes, we thank God for the week. Praise the Lord. And yeah. thank you. Thank you for being with us throughout the week for your sacrifice. Mm. Um, to be able to be with us, we bless the Lord for you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Now, uh, just before we get to today's hot topic, what a way to close a conversation. <laughs> yes. Um, kindly just help us by way of recap. Um, tell us what we talked about yesterday. Uh, and then we get to today's conversation. Thank you, Pastor. Indeed, it's been a great week. And um, we started by looking at, of course, understanding the times. Mm. And yesterday, our talk was lovers of pleasure. Yeah. And we said that these are people who find that satisfaction in part of the love of the worldly things mm. rather than the things of God. Yeah. And so that's where we were looking. Do we... <clears throat> as Christians or as believers mm. find ourselves there that what gives us satisfaction are the worldly things yeah. rather than the things of God. Mm. But at the same time, we say that these people, the love of pleasure or the love of the world things supersedes the mm. love of God. Mm. And it really ties with our what we talked before of self-love yeah. or that sometimes these things become a priority mm. in our lives or in our walk with God. Yeah. And uh, we are just looking at as believers, these lovers of pleasure, might they or can they also take our desire or our hearts mm. away from God. Yeah. And we finish by saying that God is not trying to deny his mm. children or his people to enjoy. Yeah. Actually, it's the one who has blessed us. So what is just saying that these pleasures or these things that give us pleasure, we should hold them with our hands mm. and not in our heart. Yeah. So that if 
it be I need to let go. Mm. I will let go. Yeah. So just remember that the Lord has blessed us. He has the one who has given us these things to enjoy, but we should not allow them mm. to take the place of God yeah. in our hearts. All right. Thank yes. you for that. I really liked that mm -hmm. statement you said in terms of we should hold these things in our hands and not in our hearts. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, otherwise they become idols. They become idols. Yeah. All right. Then today we wrap this conversation. We are talking about um, the teachings of demons again as a sign um, of the times to come, of the end times. So allow me to read First Timothy chapter 4, um, verse 1 to 3, and then, you know, just allow you to help us appreciate what the Bible is saying. So this is First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. And the Bible says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times some will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons, through the insincerity of liars whose consciences are seared, who forbid marriage and require abstinence from foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Wow. That they will depart from the faith by devoting themselves to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. Mm. Oof. Now, talk to us. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Wow. Um, actually, before we go to the teachings of demons, yes. even as you are um, just starting, you said, what is, has happened in our country? Mm. We, we might not agree. Mm. And this actually took me back to yesterday as I was just preparing and thinking about this. I decided mm. to go for a walk as I was just mm. thinking. And as I think of the topic of demons, our to talk mm. today is teaching of the demon. Mm. But I was just thinking, and then a friend called me from Northern Ireland, and he told me, no, it is interesting. In the West, the way people don't believe in this thing. Mm. And I thought of how, again, we have two extremes. There are yes. those who believe so much, mm. they see everything, yes. demons in everything. Yes. And then there are those who are so naive about them yeah. that they don't see anything. Mm. And it took me back when we were growing up in the village. Yes. Whereby, you know, even I think it is still today, when I talk of people who like see demons in everything, mm. if you are going to a market or you are going for a, a safari journey, yeah. Then the first person as a, or you meet on the road uh, is a woman. Mm. It's like that journey is not good. Oh, there was such a belief. Yes. And I believe, or if you are going to sell, some yeah. people even, <clears throat> if they are going to meet with a woman, maybe they would even decide to take another route. Mm. But then I also thought of, or it used to be if you are going and you happen to hit your left leg on a stone, yeah. that's not a bad, a good a day. Good, yeah. So people believe even today there are people who see evil or, I mean, mm. demons in everything. Yeah. While, like in the West, there are those who, they are just, there's nothing, mm. demons and all that. And I was just thinking, these things, it can be extreme, yes. but what we need to know that I am reminded of even of what Paul said to the Galatians mm. in chapter 3. That's what. If Paul would say, who has bewitched you? Meaning th these people are understanding. Yeah. Of course, there must have been maybe people being bewitched or something like mm. that. And I was just thinking as we think of demons, and remember as we are talking of the teachings of demons. Yeah. Do they still exist today, mm, mm. this teaching? But I thought of that and it just, we might not agree, yeah. but again, one thing that should come out clearly that these things exist. You can either, the only thing we need, we don't have to be like see demons in everything, yeah. but at the same time, we should not be mm. naive about them. Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I like that as a way of uh, laying yes. the foundation. Yeah. Uh -huh. now so um, Paul wants again mm. uh, Timothy about these false teachers um, in verse 2 and he reveals who these teachers are. Mm. So he said they are hypo uh, hypocritical, 
they are lying mm. uh, religious leaders. Mm. So there were people in the church, and actually, um, as I was reading, you, we are being told, this, there were these philosophers who believed so much, they were the Greek philosophers, mm. and they were in the church, and they were bringing confusion, and so Paul is addressing Timothy and telling him, mm. these people you need to be careful about because like they are coming in with another or um, the kind of teaching they are bringing in mm. is not what we know in the word of God. Yeah. And that's why as we look at this topic today, I believe it is very, very critical and very important because they still do exist today. Mm. False teachers were threat to the church at that time, mm. and they are even, even today. today. Mm. And maybe just to help us, whether these people are there then or they are still in the church, mm. I would, if uh, we can read Mark, okay. the book of Mark, chapter 13. Okay. Mark chapter 13. Yeah, from verse 21 to 23. 21 to 23, Mark chapter 13, verse 21 to 23. Mm. And then if anyone says to you, look, here is the Christ, or look, there he is, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and perform signs and wonders mm -hmm. to lead astray, if possible, the elect. But be on guard. I have told you all these things beforehand. They mm. were to lead or to mislead the elect. Mm. So, Again, we are being told to be on guard, meaning yeah. they are there, mm. not out there, but in inside. Yeah. inside. Mm. And also maybe just read the last uh, reading, Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. 20 28 and 31. All right, Acts chapter 20, verse 28 to 31. Yes. All right, Acts chapter 20, verse 28 to 31. This is how... The Bible reads, pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which he obtained with his own blood. I know that after my departure, fierce wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves will arise men speaking twisted things to draw away the disciples after them. Therefore, be alert, remembering that for three years I did not cease night or day to admonish everyone with tears. So as I understand this reading is like the word is warning those of us mm. especially who have been given the um, mandate of taking care of mm. the flock or the as leaders that we be careful not uh, so that this kind of these uh, teachers do not infiltrate mm or mislead yeah. the people we have been given to take care of. So meaning, as pastors, as leaders, we need to be alert that these people are in the church, or they are still mm. exist. And as we, those who have been given that mandate, we have we have the responsibility mm. to let people know that these things, yeah. these people mm. are still there. Mm. So uh, <clears throat> with that in mind that the de uh, teachers of demons, they still exist and yeah. they were there in the past. Mm. What are those, these teachings that mm -hmm. we are looking about? Yeah. yeah. From our reading alone, mm. we see that one of the things that they were teaching, they were teaching uh, that the body is able, actually, if you look at it, and uh, again, as I was just looking at the, the study, what these people, the first thing is, their teaching can be good or bad in a way. Okay. And what I mean by this, mm. when I say good, many times they will end up teaching something that is good and sometimes it might be something in terms of even the way we live. 
And mm -hmm. if you, maybe for people who have interacted with people who have ended up being in a cult, mm. or something they just see, there's a way of dressing, yeah. which is decent. See, it is not bad mm. way. Mm. You, but there's a way that they make it that if you are part of us, this is the way mm. you need to dress. Yeah. Yeah. And they look decent, they look, and you remember even we'll see here, mm. or they are they're like, the way of the kind of things we eat. Yeah. And sometimes they might make it in terms of, you know, diet, you mm. eat, so see. So yeah. these things are not, they can be teaching the good things, mm. or even I know many times you will read whereby they talk of like purity. Mm. You live, you abstain from this and this, but the only the what comes in or what will make it bad mm. is now they be end up controlling uh -huh. your life. Okay. So these people can be teaching the good thing. Or what seems to be good. What seems to be good. Yes. Yes. That's the what seems to be good. Yeah. But when this again, the other part of it can, can be they can teach something outside mm. what the word of God. Yes. And so one thing they in like what we see here, they were teaching that the body is evil and only that matters is our soul. Mm. Again, this takes us what we have been learning. Yeah. That sometimes we might be told, you know, the world is coming to an end. Mm. Why bother even the bo about the body? Mm. And we looked that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So there were more of you don't what because why? The body is corrupted. Mm. So what you need to think of is your mm -hmm. your soul. soul. Yeah. And I believe there are people even today who have believed that mm. this body does not really yeah. matter yeah. but so long as my soul mm. is safe yeah so that's one of the things that they were teaching but even today i know that mm. and you don't sometimes we don't even feed this body we don't take care of it and these are some of the things that mm. we need to look at yeah but at the same time again the teachings of these the demons actually one area was also they were like forbidding people mm. to marry. Mm -hmm. Again, this event today is still happening. Yeah. So there are so many things, and I believe if people were even to text or send messages, yeah. some of the, there may be some people have gone through this. Mm. Mm. I don't know it, how it happened, but yesterday I, happened to, I was watching a YouTube and, and a story of a lady who just here in Kenya, yeah, whereby in their church, as I say, it was like it is the pastor who can own good things, and so people would give so much. Oh, okay, and it is a teaching that people believe, and people are giving so much while. The church members are living in poverty, but mm. they give, they give. So I think of, these are some of the kind of teaching that at this time where they were being told, you don't need mm. to marry. Yeah. You don't need to eat this kind of food. Mm. So those, that's one yeah. of the, yes. So what you're talking <clears throat> about is, um, because I, I I think what here it says is that people will depart from the faith by devoting themselves mm. to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. And then it says this will come through the insincerity of liars. So it will be through people. Mm -hmm. And you're saying at the heart of it, what reveals these kinds of teachings, these deceitful spirits and teachings of demons, is, is, is that kind of restriction and control that is placed on people. Yes, yes. And so God has said it is not good for a man to be alone. And then somebody else comes and says, it is not good for you to marry. <laughs> marry yes, uh, God yes. says all foods are blessed. <laughs> yes. Somebody says uh, there are some foods, you know, do yes. not touch those. Yes. Do not touch. And, and that is what you're saying, that 
that kind of restriction, that kind of forbidding, mm. um, which God does not forbid. Uh, so God has not restricted, yes, yes, God has not yes. forbidden, but man comes and puts these rules and, and, and regulations. That is the teachings of demons. Yes. And that's why, you know, it is when I think when we hear of teachings of demons, mm. we are like, maybe the, 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 the idea here, somebody might think, you know, when in, uh, in our minds we think of demons and mm. this, you know, <laughs> somebody with the horns and yeah. all that. The, it is, there are things that we interact with every mm. day, the things that we know, but these people, they come and twist them or mm. what the word is saying, yeah. they put, they twist it a bit or they add something mm. or they take away something to make it what they want to achieve. Yeah. Yes. Ah, okay. So it's like, uh, for instance, the devil, when he's tempting Jesus, mm. he's using the Bible. He's yes. actually using the Bible. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So the Bible is used, but not for the intention that God intended. Tense. Okay, yes, yes. all right. Yes, and yeah, they will not get things from outside there. Mm. They will use yeah. the word of God, the one that we know. Mm. And you will hear people quoting the verse. But then sometimes we are not allowed to see the whole truth mm. in the word. Yeah. So they will, uh, these people, they will f uh, follow the teachings of demons, will fall away from the faith simply not because they never believe, but because there is that part of truth that is being hidden or is they are not allowed to see. Just like what you have said, we are being told you cannot eat this kind of food. Well, God has given us or has said when everything is acceptable, yeah. so long as it is offered in the name of God, mm. but then somebody will say, no, it is not good for you. Yeah. You are not supposed to marry, yeah. Yeah. but at the same time, God is saying, multiply. Yes, <laughs> yes. The, yes. Yeah. You yeah. know, one of the interesting things I've heard um, is when a, a pastor tells somebody who is in marriage that your wife mm. is not your soulmate, is not your destiny helper, whatever phrase that is used, and actually calling people out of marriage. I have heard such absurd, so to speak, stories. Are those pastors serving what we are talking about here? Even when they break marriages and claim this is not your wife, I will show you who your wife is and breaking marriages in that way. That is the kind of teaching we're talking about. Thank you. Actually, the other thing that I saw that these uh, teachers of demons, mm. they can be leaders in the church mm. or pastors. Mm. Okay. And remember, they have been like given the authority. And so what we normally do is that we take their words at the as the final authority. Yes. So a pastor saying, this person is not meant for you. Mm. And somebody will believe what pastor said is the gospel truth. Yeah. And Yesterday, again, I was just hearing whereby, you know, sometimes, in fact, the Bible talks of whereby even if you were in a marriage mm. before you got saved, the Bible or your partner is not saved. Mm. We are not being told that when you get saved, you now divorce from them, you separate from mm. them. So when somebody is telling you this is not your soulmate, I don't know what kind of teaching yeah. is that. Mm. Mm. So yes, these are the kind of things that remember it will, these teachings can come from yeah. your pastor. Yeah. They can come from that leader, that leader you trust so much. Mm. But the question that I need to ask myself, yeah. what is the word of God saying. saying. Yeah. 
Wow. All mm. right. I, mm. I want us to, um, you know, continue with this conversation, mm. especially in terms of how we can be guarded and guided yes, by yes. God's word so that we don't depart. Because I think that is the mm. danger. It says people will depart from the faith. Oof. Mm. And they will follow deceitful spirits and yes. teachings of demons. <laughs> Interestingly, next week we will be talking about discerning deception. So oh, it will be wow. a good a, <laughs> yeah. a good continuation of mm. this conversation. Mm. Wow. Uh, but what are you hearing? What are you learning? Uh, please, would love to hear from you. What a conversation this is. The teachings of demons. In what ways have you had this play out? Um, whether in things that you have had out there. Perhaps it could be your own experience. What have you had? Would love to hear from you. 20316 is our SMS line. 0786-316-316 is our WhatsApp line. Professor Naomi Gikonyo, thank you for tuning in. Daniel Mudeki, thank you for that word. Gertrude from Westland saying, this week has been wonderful. Um, family media, tucking each word from the Bible. It is a blessing. Mr. Bernard Simiu, a blessed day to you too. Please do send your SMSs, your WhatsApp messages. 20316 is our SMS line. 0786 is our WhatsApp line. But indeed, we need to hear the voice of God. Otherwise, as the Bible warns us today, we end up departing from the faith and devoting ourselves to deceitful spirits and the teachings of demons. Oof. What a time we are living in when these things are actually happening. Well, this is the family devotion where the scriptures come alive as we discuss matters from the Bible and discover why the Bible matters. And this week we have been talking about understanding the times. And today specifically we are talking about the teachings of demons. How can you and I be able to discern what these teachings are? Indeed, as just has been mentioned by our pastor today, we will see that we will be forbidden, we will be restricted, we will be controlled by our religious leaders. Keep engaging with us, 20316 is our SMS line, 0786-316-316 is our WhatsApp line. In what ways have you seen this play out? Abisalon says, good morning, very powerful, what to preach and teach is very clear in scripture. Why is it that true believers are not bold enough to condemn what is happening in our country? You know, he's talking about the preaching of nyota, selling of oil and water, selling of nails, distributing mawe ya daudi. Is there anything like that? Touching fimbo ya musa says currently the meza ya buona is being misused in broad daylight, but true worshippers are doing nothing. Ooh, are we doing nothing, pastor? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> We are not doing nothing, but yeah. um, maybe my comment on this would be, yeah. me as individual, yes. what do I do? Because it is not just enough mm. for pastors to condemn these things. Yes. But if I know the truth, the mm. truth will set me free. Ah, that's true. Yes. Yeah. Because the pastors, yes, can condemn it. Yes. But that is not enough. The believer can still he choose to go that yes. direction. Yes. All right. All right. <laughs> Uh, John Gidanga, all the way from Nakuru, says all the teachings have been enlightening and revelational. Thank you. Thank you, John Gidanga. Mark says, good morning, pastors. Blessings to you this morning. That's why we ought to read the Bible ourselves, mm -hmm. not to depend on others, lest we get led astray. Ignorance is the root cause of this. Okay, thank you, Mark. Uh, Mutembei says, praise the Lord. Wow, great conversation. Pastor, help me here. Is your, what is in your thought? What fuels all this deception? Can the deceived find help? And maybe this is a good point for us to transition to the conversation. Yes. Can the deceived find help? They can. Mm -hmm. And I believe they are finding help. And this help is not going to come from anywhere else apart from the word of God. Okay. And uh, uh, what fuels this? Mm is again we can go back to our topics mm. what we have been talking about the love of pleasure or we want to live yeah. a life that is should i say comfortable mm. or because today why are people going to church or giving them life mm. their life to christ there are people who will give their life to christ yeah because God has talked, convicted them through the Holy Spirit. But there are those who have been going through problem. Maybe this is what will sort my problem. Mm. So I go 
I give my life or I go to church with the mind of what I want to get. Yeah. And if that's the motive of me going to church and I get a pastor or somebody who mm. said, bring this, we'll pray mm. and we, your life will change. Yes. Why? People will do anything mm. possible. Yeah. Because people want their lives to change or they want things that they can see. Mm. So this is something that will continue yeah. happening until we understand what the word of God is telling yeah. us. Yeah, what the truth yeah. is. What the truth is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because mm. you will hear people telling you, I reached reach my end and I decided to go for this person to pray for me. And of course, Mm. Even today, recently we had gone, very sad, we had gone to visit with my fellow pastor, visitor, some, one of our congregants who is mm. unwell. And sh we were shocked as she was telling us the way the pastors have been going to pray for her. Mm. And after prayer, they say, you have to give this and this and this. Ah? Yes. A sick person? Yes. At the, at the moment, they are trying to raise funds even to be taken for treatment outside. And the, the same, so you find, and people are saying, have you thought of going, we take you to so and so for prayers? Mm. Of course, when you are desperate, where you are in need, yeah. you will do anything. And yeah. you are just saying, people forgetting what the mm. words of Jesus, remember, Freely you have received, freely, freely give. give. Yeah. So these things are happening because of the mm. desperation of yeah. our, or, or the needs that people have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is very sad. And I think that's why mm. the Bible does say that my people perish because of lack yeah. of, mm. of knowledge. Mm. But the other side to that and what I see mm. like in this text is this whole aspect of legalism. Um, you know that that if I beat this body so much, but mm. by failing to marry, if I beat this body so much by denying myself mm. certain foods, it's almost like I am closer to God. And so I, I see also the other side is a se a false sense of godliness and piety. Mm. And I think Paul does allude to that also mm. in Colossians chapter two. Let me just read that okay. quick, and then you get back to this conversation. A second. Uh, Colossians rather chapter 2 from verse 16 this is what Paul says therefore let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and mm -hmm. drink or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a sabbath these are a shadow of the things to come but the substance belongs to Christ let no one disqualify you in insisting on asceticism mm -hmm. and worship of angels, going in detail about visions, puffed up without reason by his sensuous mind, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and knit together through its joints and ligaments, grows with a growth that is from God. If with Christ you died to the elemental spirits of the world, why, as if you are still alive in the world, do you submit to regulations? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, referring to things that all perish as they are used, according to human precepts and teachings. These have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-made religion and asceticism and severity to the body, but they are of no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. That all these things ultimately do not help us at all in our pursuit mm. for godliness. Mm. And so to mm. restrict ourselves, mm. to, to, to allow ourselves to be controlled in that manner, mm. to suffer intentionally, so to speak, does not necessarily uh, bring yes, us closer to, to God. God. And elsewhere, as yeah. Paul will say, yes. it is for freedom that, that Christ has set us free. free. All right. Yeah. But please um, help us then appreciate what direction you would want us to go uh, with this conversation. Maybe just uh, before we wrap up, one thing that uh, we need to understand mm. from this topic, and yeah. it is a huge one, false teachers, they have the tendency mm. or this demon <laughs> teachers, teachings, yes. Yes, teachings, teachings of demons. Of teachings of demons. Yeah. One thing, they have the tendency of giving stringent rules uh -huh. and just like, don't do's mm. and don'ts mm. so that's one thing that people should be alert about yeah sometimes they will like in our 
church or in a, we don't do this we mm. don't allow this we don't mm. you are like you don't have a life of yeah. yourself yeah. i know again w um the the kind of even a church they call it that way where they can never if it is not their member and mm. you are bereaved they cannot enter the house or you know some wow. of somebody who is not their member mm. but or they are the, this type of people who will try to separate you from your own family yeah. and they like the person who matters most most to you should be the within the circle within of your the church. church yeah so those are some of the things that we need to be aware mm. or careful about yeah. because these things they will happen so when you start seeing somebody who is just controlling your life mm. because those we even in the church yeah. we need to be free mm. yeah so those are some of the thing you will find they are most of the time they are very impressive mm. they can be very good speakers yeah they and those are some of the things that draw people to mm. these people mm. when they stand what we today we can say like motivational speakers yeah. they they can do very very wonderful when and mm. sometimes we end up getting so much impressed yeah. with their kind of eloquence and their kinds of talk on their mm. the way they do you know they dress the yeah. kind and we forget that it is about the word of god mm. so again one thing that we need to remember if their teaching is not in line with what the word of god is yeah. saying yeah we should put mm. a question mark. yeah yeah okay. so mm. but yes we this thing these people are not going to get less or to go away mm. they will continue being there yeah. Yeah. so that's why i would uh, like to encourage our viewers and our listeners one way of protecting ourselves mm. as individuals yeah. because your pastor mm. they will do their work what again that's why we keep saying even when people get saved whether it is online mm. that you go to a bible believing church church yeah where they teach the word of god mm. so well, that's one thing that we need to get the right place where we are free to ask question to interrogate the yeah. word of god but one thing is that we need to immerse mm. it is like being baptized yes. getting deep in ourselves in the truth and that truth is the word of god yeah. myself not my, just yes it is you might have a very good pastor mm. but me as a Peter, Pastor mm. Peter, mm. what is the word of God telling me about this? Mm. So that's one thing that our listeners or whoever yeah. need to know. I get I need to immerse myself in the word of God. We must read and study this word. Mm. And I'm glad that we have that opportunity here as Family TV yeah. that people can be enlightened, mm. can be challenge can be encouraged and with what is being used is the word of god yeah do we believe what the word of god says, says yeah. or we believe what my pastor mm. is saying yeah wow wow amazing amazing we must seek um to 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 study mm. god's word for ourselves mm. does that mean we become like the bereans <laughs> you know the story of the bereans yes um, the who, jews at berea who are more noble mm. than those who are in the saloniki because yeah. paul himself and i don't think you and i are preachers or pastors but i don't think any one of us measures to the stata to the status of paul, paul. and yet they listened mm. to paul but then when they went home they checked to they, see yes. if the things that paul was teaching actually accorded to the scripture yes. that is how we should behave yes Mm. and again like just one of our viewers said yeah where in the bible that's the first question i should ask where in the bible am i being told that by buying nails or yes. touching this yeah i'll be blessed yeah 
where in so the Bereans that's what they will do mm. yes the Paul was a scholar Paul was very very thorough but then they would not take that as the yeah yeah they, they will still go back mm. to the word of God yeah and questioning sometimes again I believe maybe sometimes we struggle in that questioning maybe why when you are questioning what the pastor said <laughs> yeah. it is like lack of faith mm, you know yes. so some people start what pastor said is final final yeah but his pastor <laughs> but pastor is a man a man yes. pastor is a man mm. that's the truth that's yeah. the truth and that's why we need to be careful if i don't understand something if i have a doubt i have some question about it i should go to my pastor mm. or the person who talked in if i cannot reach them get somebody who can maybe help you understand it yeah. better yeah. and that's why even again being in a bible study where you can go through the word of mm. god is very important yeah. because these teachings of demons they will be there mm. they are there yeah and sometimes they they sound very nice and sweet mm. Mm. and they entice us and if we don't know we end up living the way yeah but it might be too late yeah so by just mm. immersing myself in the word of god yeah that's the only way to go wow thank you thank you pastor peter let me mm. see if there's anything here from the messages that are coming in, Maggie Lugalia from Lanet says, Praise God, we must read the word of God and meditate on it so that we are not led astray. Thank you, Maggie Lugalia. That is so true. Let me ask if you're there, um, you know, even as we have been asking, in what ways have you seen these teachings, these teachings that Paul calls them the teachings of demons? Have you experienced that yourself? And in what ways have you seen this Play out 20316 is our SMS line, 0786316316 is our WhatsApp line. We'd love to hear from you before we wrap this conversation. But also perhaps you are there and you are not saved. Mm. You know, you cannot completely dis, um, you know, disentangle yourself um, from this kind of conversation unless, or rather from this kind of teaching, unless you have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior over your life. And so if you're there, please feel, uh, feel free to reach out to us. 20316 is our SMS line, 0786 316 316 is our WhatsApp line, and we would be able to walk with you that journey. Somebody says, hello, morning, oh, that's kudos for teaching us um, this truth, but for our church leaders, who will tell them? Because they hear and see no evils and never <laughs> question them. I think, yeah, the leaders will have their judgment. The Bible does tell us in James chapter yes. 3 that let not all of us aspire to be teachers because our judgment is stricter. So each person indeed will have ultimately to account for what mm. they did. But also, on Fridays, I like to remind you, um, especially that we are able to do this by virtue of partnership with men and women like yourself. And so on Fridays, I, I give a bit of uh, an urge, a, a pull, so to speak, so that you may be able to partner with us in what God is doing here. And so this is an encouragement that you consider giving to the ministry here at Family Media. And so let me urge you, even now you can be able to do that with whatever it is that you have. And so kindly, I just use the pay bill number 316, 316 for account, write your phone number for the amount, whatever the Lord has blessed you with, feel free to use that for his kingdom and the Lord will bless you. 316, 316 is the pay bill number and uh, the account number is your phone number and the Lord will bless you. Let me read um, this last one and then we get to pray. This one says, my name is Kobole. Oh, I like that name. <laughs> A long time friend of Pastor Apollo. Oh, this is your friend. We live in the last days. The Bible talks so much on how people will be disobedient to God. Even false teachers will come who will use so-called stage managed miracles to deceive the elect. We we need to leave Bereans in Acts 17. They took time to study the word of God and not believe everything they were taught. Easy believism is killing the church because Christians take their pastor, apostles, or prophet more than the word of God. Second mm. Timothy 3 warns us, I don't like the phrase my pastor says. Instead, 
we should say the word of God well, says. I like yeah. that. So let us not be those that say, <laughs> my pastor says, rather let us be those that say, the word of God says. says wow. wow. Pastor. Thank you, I Kobole. want to pray. <laughs> I want to pray for you today. Thank you. Yes. I really All right. need it. Thank you. Let us pray. Thank you. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you and we bless your name. Mm. We thank you for the week that we have had, even as we have been looking at understanding the times. Mm. We ask and pray that you would equip us indeed to understand these times and to see these signs, O oh God. And especially today, when we've been talking about the teachings of demons, that none of us will fall prey mm -hmm. to these kind of teachings. We thank you for your servant that has been with us throughout this week. Mm -hmm. We ask and pray, O oh gracious Redeemer, that you will be with him, that yes, you will God. remember him, O oh God, that your blessing will be upon him. Mm -hmm. We ask in Jesus that you remember his family, mm -hmm. that you will bless his wife and their mm -hmm. two daughters, O God. Mm -hmm. We ask in the mighty name of Jesus that you will bless his ministry at NBC Kitengela mm -hmm. and the calling that you have placed in his life, O God. Mm -hmm. We ask that you would perfect all that concerns him, O mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And so thank you, King Jesus, for our labor in you mm -hmm. is never in mm -hmm. vain. And so we know, O oh God, because of the sacrifice he has put in your vineyard, O oh God, mm -hmm. that then you are able to bless him even in excess of his sacrifice. Receive glory, receive honor, receive praise. Mm -hmm. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor. I really appreciate it, Pastor. Yes. And thank you. May the Lord bless you. And then may the Lord continue to bless the Family TV for the great work they are doing to yes. reach the world with the word of God. Thank you. Amen. The Lord bless you. Thank wow. You. Understanding the times. That was our conversation. We pray and hope it has been a blessing to you. What one lesson, just one lesson have you learned throughout this week? What one lesson have you learned throughout this week? And how are you going to apply it in your life? We we'll would love to hear from you. Please do encourage us by engaging with us. 20316 is our SMS line. 0786316316 is our WhatsApp line. Before I go, again, I want to remind us, kindly do consider partnering with us in the work that we do here, as I like to do on Fridays. And so you are able, even now, to just participate in the work that God is doing through family media, keeping Jesus on the airwaves. And so again, let me encourage you, feel free to use our pay bill number 316, 316, and for account, write your phone number for amount, whatever it is that the Lord has blessed you with, you can be able to use that. But if you'd like to be our partner in a long-term basis by way of prayer and financial giving, feel free to send an SMS with the word partner to 20316 and somebody will get back to you. Now, guess what? Next week, we build up on this conversation as we go deeper and we will be talking about discerning deception. And so we'll look at developing a spirit of discernment. We'll talk about cults and the occults. We'll talk about new age spirituality. We'll talk about African traditional religion. We'll talk about the humanistic gospel. And so this is an invitation that you consider joining us next week. Come with your questions, come with your comments. Let us learn together so that we may know the truth and for that truth, to set us free. Well, this is goodbye from us, but please do not switch off because after this, we have behind the scenes where our MD takes time to just have a conversation with some of our partners and we do pray and hope that you will be blessed. See you next week.